Welcome to Crusader Kings 2, but wait, there's more. It's not CK2, it's actually When the World Stopped Making Sense as voted on by the patrons. So I'm looking for a second series to start alongside Mad World again. And the Japan mod, it's fun, but it's so, you know, here and there, it's depending on how much work I do on it. I, d I can't commit to making that a full series. So instead, we're going to have this one, we're going to have Mad World, and then we're going to have Rim World alongside it as well. A nice mixture, I think. So this was voted on. I don't know a huge amount about it, but I do know that it's basically set during the fall of the, uh, the true Western Roman Empire here. Visigoths, Ostrogoths, Germanic Migration Period, basically. The Dark Ages is, is what this is supposed to represent here. Um, Little Augustus in 476, we can play as Romulus Augustus, uh, the last true uh, emperor of the Western Roman Empire, if you want to look at it like that. Odoacer, who is the, uh, the, the conquester, the Germanic... Uh, wait, don't tell me, Ostrogoth. He's an Ostrogoth. He was the first king of Italy as well. He, he was the one that basically dismantled the Western Roman Empire there. We've got Theodoric, who is an Ostrogoth, another Ostrogoth. Somewhere around this this area behind the map. Somewhere, somewhere around this area here. Um, Childeric? Don't know who he is. Don't really care either. Who do we want to play as? That's the real question. Um, I'm not entirely sure right now. Let's just go back a second. Let me take a look at the rest of the dates there. I didn't give it enough chance. Now, I have already tried playing as Julius, uh, Julius Nepos. There were some interesting mechanics that I wasn't a big fan of, so I'd like to start again now that I know how those mechanics work. I might just pick him, because I did enjoy that campaign. It seems like a pretty good one. I'll explain why in a second, but we will look through the other start dates before we really commit. This is a very annoying feature. Thank you for that, CK2. Right, back. Let's take a look. Shattered Empire. Only four years ago, Odoacer destroyed the Western Roman Empire, and this is during the, the sort of prime Germanic migration when they're sort of conquesting everything everywhere. Let's not go with that one. I, I want to start in the earlier start date, but I thought I'd just show you guys some of the other ones here. Frankish Steel, this is probably the, the prerequisite to the uh, the Frankish Empire of, of course, Charlemagne. His father, what was his name? Don't remember. Probably like some variant of Charles. Charlie. Who knows? We've got Gothic Wars, which again, more Germanic people causing issues, I would assume. I don't know a huge amount about this period of history. The Dark Ages are not my strong point by any stretch of the imagination. I do know a little bit about it, though, and, and sort of the fall of the uh, Western Roman Empire here. But, that being said, we're going to play as this lovely fella here, Julius Nepos, because I think it's a hard start date. I think it's a hard start character. The last scene of some of the legitimate Western Roman Empire was its de facto ruler following the ascension of Romulus Augustus and then the barbarian Odoacer. He basically has Dalmatia, and that's it. I think this would be cool. I like the plan. I like the idea of reforming the entire... And that's going to be the plan, by the way. Reforming the entire Roman Empire as Julius Nepos. We've got a workout for us. This is going to be a very difficult start. So, if I go to custom game set up here and we can actually see what lands he holds. He has this. Ostrogothica to our north. A very powerful, ridiculously overpowered ruler. Sort of ruler designer level ruler there. I'll show you him in a second. We've of course got the Western Roman Empire here. Ruled by a little eight-year-old uh, Augustus there. We've got the Eastern Roman Empire, which still hold most of their lands there, all the way from uh, Greece to Alexandria there, with, of course, Jerusalem in the middle. This is before the rise of Islam, uh, quite a few years before the rise of Islam, funnily enough. So, Christianity is dominant. It controls most of the world at this stage, as you can see here. We still have some ancient religions, though. We have, like, Kemetic there. We have Zoroastrian, which is, of course, by regular CK2 dates, generally extinct. We have Germanic in the sort of central Germanic provinces here, a little bit in, in the start of England there. Obviously, Scandinavia and Germany. I think this is the best start we've got. I like the idea of playing as the small guy and trying to reclaim that, that you know, huge empire. This is the plan. I've already got the rule set up. Don't worry about it too much. Not too many changes here. Um, just disabling my usual stuff. New features that they've added that I don't really like in CK2 there. And VIA events at the bottom there I've set to on. Some of the events in VIA, some people don't like because they're a little too... Um, a little too on the nose, a little too NSFW, not very family friendly. So I turn those back on because we know what type of series we're going to have, let's be honest. Let's do it. Loading game. Now, again, I played this before, and I was doing quite well, and then one of the mechanics basically made me lose half my land. So we won't be doing that mechanic, and I'll talk about it if and when it appears. We are playing as this lovely man here, Vicar Julius. Now, with certain characters, if they're not given traits, they're given random. This random version of Vicar Julius Nepos is much, much better than the last character I had. The last character I had, I had level 1 diplomacy education, a lot of crappy traits. His traits aren't good. You know, wrath, stubborn, erudite, gluttonous. Erudite is about the only good one in there. We will take rulership to try and buff him up a little bit and you might have noticed pretty quickly we don't have an heir to our dynasty at all so we do need to fix that pretty immediately let's try and have a son our wife wow she's even worse than last time arbitrary deceitful paranoid gluttonous mastermind theologian reducing her fertility even further what we want to do pretty quickly i would say let's divorce her and try and find ourselves a genius wife instead start building this dynasty strong uh pretty early on i think holy shit she's good genius attractive strong uh, really 
which is a Frank, though. A Germanic Frank. I can't imagine he's going to allow a betrothal. No. What about to me, though? Oh, obviously we can't because we're still married. Well, first things first, let's get rid of our wife. Now, what do our courtiers think of us? 47% chance. Uh, well, we can at least see if we can get any people in the plot here. 23%, 18%. Okay, you know what? We actually might be able to do it. This is possible that we can get people to murder our wife. And I would like that so we can find ourselves a new, cooler wife. Let's set our crown focus here in Spalatum. So, what's our biggest worry right now? Um... Funnily enough, the Ostrogoths to our north. Now, like I said, this character is very, very OP. He's one of the characters that they actually have assigned default traits to. Look at this man. Legendary leader, which is the equivalent of basically shrewd, with some extra bonuses there. General opinion, same trait opinion, of course. Brilliant strategist. He's a genius. He's strong. He's a scholar. He's patient. He's ambitious. He's gregarious. He's diligent. How are we supposed to beat this man in war? Well, the way I did it last time, believe it or not, was with some clever commanding. Now, I know that doesn't fit the ethos of the channel, but I did do it honest, I swear. You're never going to see the video, but I did, I did genuinely <laughs> did genuinely beat him through um, attrition, basically, and letting him die to siege events, which is always the fun thing to do. Right, let's get our council set up here. I'm not too bothered about this, seeing as we don't have very many important vassals that we have to worry about rebelling or anything like that. So this is just all a little bit of a bonus. Why doesn't he like us? I'm not sure. We'll find out in a minute. Court, musician, very important title there. Claudius. Congratulations. I will say, preface to the series, my Latin is bad and everything is in Latin. I don't know any Latin. Well, at least barely any Latin. Um, I don't expect to try and pronounce them right. Don't correct me on my pronunciation for fuck's sake. It's 2018. Move on. We speak English now. I'm going to oversee construction or at least collect some taxes. That's what I meant to say. I'm going to collect some taxes. Why? Because if these guys descend south, like um, a big old evil Ostrogothic pack of wolves, then we are going to have to fight them off. Um... Probably with some mercenaries. And we're going to need some gold for that, funnily enough. So, overseeing construction. Why do I keep saying that? Collecting taxes, best option there. What's our tech like? Well, what is the tech even like at this point in time? Is it just regular CK2, really? Uh, sort of. There are some changes here and there. Oh, we can still get all the regular buildings and technology. It doesn't really make too much sense. But I can understand why they wouldn't want to redo the entire trade system. Have a nice day. So, um... What's the plan? Well, let's finish off sorting out the council first. Have we got anyone better? Yes, welcome aboard, Felix. I don't, again, I don't really care about annoying these boys too much because they are randomers. Um, Comes Galenius of the Legio Italica. What an incredible man. Definitely the guy that we want leading our armies. He's actually the head of a mercenary band, right? Legio Italica? Not sure, but I'm pretty sure from last game I saw him. Yeah, look at this guy. There he is. The Legio Italica, 3,400 men. So, actually, we've got almost equal men there uh, to the Ostrogoths. What we have to do... It's just be very careful in terms of how we fight them. We don't want to be fighting them in mountains or anything like that. We've got to watch river crossings as well. If we're careful, though, it's a pretty easy war, I won't lie. Because they're obviously on the offensive, taking a lot of damage in sieges, things like that. Hopefully, we'll get to that point in a second. What else is there necessary to do? Um, He's pretty good. Maybe sack off Frumentari. Uh, sure. Marius Venatius Basilus. Welcome aboard. I'm going to get you to study technology in Constantinople. And a better patriarch, too, probably wouldn't hurt, especially as this dude absolutely hates us. Oh, he's our rival. Understandable. Fired. Let's get ourselves a new boy, a better boy. Do you want to go and improve religious relations with Jerusalem? Um, that's this one. I can tell by the pixels. By which I mean, uh, there it is. Bishop of Jerusalem. Have they also added a custom... Have they also added a little custom model there as well? Look at that. Oh, that's kind of cool. I like that. Well done. And there it is. Mount Zion, Western Wall, Church of the Holy Sepulchre. That's probably what that's supposed to represent. Not entirely sure, because it's definitely not the, uh, the Dome of Rock. Is that the right thing? Is that what I'm thinking of? Anyway, look, moving on. I'm not getting into the history of the Dark Ages, because I don't know it. And I'm not going to assume. Speed up. Let's wait for them to invade. We've really got nothing else to do now, besides wait for our wife to die and fight off this initial Ostrogothic invasion. After that, we are free to take the world in our own hands as, as Julius Nepos, whose flag is actually kind of far too nice for this channel, so excuse me while I just go ahead and fix that a second. I feel like that suits us a lot better than this ridiculously uh, nice-looking flag there. There we go. Perfect. House Nepos, congratulations. You've been restored to your true glory. And you know what? Nepos, not really a fan. This is probably why you lost the Empire, let's be honest. Gone for the classic Roman name, Biggest Dickus, making us the highest wank in Rome. I feel like that will definitely help out with the campaign here. It's going to give us that political edge. And firstly, where is your beard as well, sir? Hang on. Um, I'm going to give him a very nice, powerful Roman beard. That one is ridiculous, but I do kind of like it, though. Um, you know what? That looks way better. You're welcome. When I restore Rome, you're going to say, what was the turning point in, in the history of our world? Um, giving this man a hairstyle that was appropriate for his rank as the new emperor. Look at this. Look at this man and tell me that is an, a, a massive improvement there. Okay. 
A big splash. You fall into the mud. Damn it. If only it didn't rain this morning. Maybe it wasn't a good idea to take a stroll outside after all. You stand up trying to wipe the mud off of your ruined clothes. This is only the will of the Lord seeking to humble me. 25% chance of getting the trait humble. I'll take it. I did not want to take it anyway. We got one prestige. Seriously? An important church has been constructed in the lands of Connor. Herald is the site where St. Patrick of himself herded the sheep when a slave. Okay. Sure. That sounds interesting. Oh, tech points. So that's pretty good. Um, we've got cultural advances. Hey, that's not bad. I would have preferred military advances to be able to build ourselves up a retinue. Oh, God. He's here. Okay. Um, my courtier, would I like to marry this man who is somewhere? Sure. Why not? Okay, then. This is how we're going to win this war. We raise our troops. We raise the Holy Order. Or the, or the military, I should say. I keep thinking it's the Holy Order because it's kind of like a unique military band. Bring these guys together. Form up. Form of. Mountain. Power. Let's do it. Are we actually going to get there all in time? Nice look at this. Okay, where are their troops? Let's wait and see. Now, they're after this particular province, so ideally I'm going to move all my troops there, seeing as that is the goal, apparently. Um, let's give ourselves decent commanders. 17, 12, 11. Uh, over to there, letting us down a little bit, but let's let them come to us. Yeah, you know what? Here's how we're going to do it. I was just about to say, let's let the bandits kill the soldiers. Let's let them die of disease. Let's let them throw their men away, taking provinces that are irrelevant to the war goal. We're going to stand here and laugh at them from our mountain. Are we on a mountain? From the plains. We're going to laugh at them from the plains. That doesn't sound nearly as good in hindsight. My wife has not been able to keep down food or drink. Let her die. That's my response. To my... What? What do you mean I ended with the death of Biggest Dickers? Sorry? <laughs> Did we just die of... Why did we die? <laughs> okay then. Somebody say autosave? Even the autosave makes me disappear into obscurity? What? I feel like that was an error. It definitely should not have happened. Um. Huh. Take two? Maybe it's because I changed our dynasty name? It, oh, I mean, that won't affect anything because the dynasty name and number are separate things, right? So... All right, I flipped over to monthly auto saves just to prevent anything like that from happening again. Very weird. I wonder why that happened. Anyway, this is my my empire, my Roman Empire. It's gone. It's now Italy under these goddamn Ostrogoths. He's got a black eye though. Hey, we didn't let him get away completely scot free. Okay, maybe that's just part of the Hermetic Society. Really, at this stage, I suppose that would make sense. Hey, if we can join that, that'd be awesome. Um. Rome has fallen. The city of Rome has finally fallen to the onslaught of Germanic invaders. The ancient city reduced to rubble. While this might be the end of the Roman state, it would be nearly impossible to preserve its true integrity without being able to read words in the correct order, because that's how sentences work. Today marks the end of 1,000 years of Roman domination. I must pre preserve the glory of Rome at all costs. We gain a claim on Italia, which is obviously very useful, seeing as the Roman Empire now no longer exists. Oh. That's good. While Italian may have fallen, the Eastern Empire still considers us the rightful heir to the Imperial Throne. Hey, that's nice. Rome lives another day. Holy shit, we're now the... We are now the Western Roman Empire. We've done it. We've done it. Like I said, the series was going to be, let's become the Roman Empire, and we've done it. Thank you for watching now. Obviously, I'm being a... <clears throat> an idiot. We are now known as Augustus Julius Biggest Dickus. We are now literally of the highest wank in Rome. <laughs> Oh, welcome to CK2. Okay, how many troops there died to attrition? Um, or just siege events, I should say. 4,286. Not enough, in my opinion. We should definitely wait a little bit longer, because that is also okay. Zeno is now once again the emperor of Constantinople. Who is he? I don't know. Some Isaurian man, and I don't know much about him, so I should probably look him up after this uh, episode is done. Lex Burgundionum. The king of Burgundians has issued a new law, creating the official recording of customs as people as his king. Okay, sweet. They're, they're civilizing. Cool. How dare these heretics inspire themselves of Rome? How dare they? I agree. Sorry, that's not... I, I say cool, they're, they're, you know, civilizing. I should have said barbarian tribesmen. Rome can only belong to Romans or something like that. You know, Carthago de Londrest or something. My co-conspirator, Marius Venatus Bacillus, has produced a poisonous viper that will kill my wife dead so I can have a genius son. Awesome. That's what I like to see. How are we doing? Oh, that's my capital. Sorry, can you leave? Okay, she survived the snake. Magnus! Not Magnus! My good friend- Who was Magnus? I don't know, but he was zealous and lustful and elusive shadow, so probably not the best guy to keep around. Patriarch Antonius of the Western Roman Empire, let everyone know about my plot to see Augustus Varina dead. Rude. Terribly rude. Is he backing the plot? He is backing the plot, so really he's only got himself to blame. Stand here 
and wait for the siege events to kill them off. I'm going to assume they actually aren't going to be able to... Uh, well, they can't take prisoners because obviously we're leading army. So they can take the capital if they want. Doesn't count for war score anyway. Or not much war score. They want to take the war goal, which we're stood on. So let's just let their troops die. Now, what, what's my biggest concern here? Well, the fact that their leader obviously has 32 marshal. Even though we have superior numbers, he will crush us still. So... What's the plan? Well, firstly, give ourselves a freaking commander. Oh, actually, finding any good commanders at all definitely wouldn't hurt us. Um, join court? Yes. Search all? 21? Welcome aboard. Uh, 20? Siege leader? Welcome aboard. Heavy infantry leader? Holy shit, these guys are so much better. Welcome aboard. Um, we got to sell some new commanders then, boys. Mountain expert? He might not be bad either, but you know what? Welcome, welcome. Thank you, thank you for being here. The Honorable Emperor Julius, that's what I like to hear. <laughs> Episode 1? Becoming the Emperor. Okay. Um, wow. We've got so many more titles now. Okay, we'll sort that out in a second. Sack you. Sack you. Uh, sack you as well. Um, you can go. Nice. That's looking a little bit better. Who else do we want? Well, we'll just hire anybody now that's on the list. Um, seeing as, you know, everyone else is pretty crappy. Nice. We'll get ourselves this man, whose name I'm not going to try and pronounce because I'll be flagged for racist content. Jerrion and Justin. What's Jerrion like? Uh, he's just a CG. Now, maybe not the best guy then to put on our flank. Well, Justin, what have you got? Nothing. Have we not got somebody with uh, heavy infantry leader? This guy's probably better than... Oh, yeah. Let's swap Justin out for him then. Just because that guy's martial will make up the difference. All right. Let's get you. Heavy infantry leader. How much heavy infantry do we actually have? Um, All of it. All of it's heavy infantry. Yes. That's what I like to hear. All right. Let those men die. Now, all we have to do is basically wait until we're almost out of war score. Then attack. And that's going to be the plan because that will give us the most advantage. The Scale Palente... Zenon, the Emperor of the East, has reorganized the Scholar Palente to better protect the Imperial interests. The Elite Corps has the potential of granting great prestige and honor, and many young men are joining it. I couldn't care. Varangian Guard, Beta Edition. Alright. 44% war score, that's fine. We don't care about that too much. 51%, they're gonna have to fight us eventually. He's down to 3,000 men, though. I oh, shit. It My wife's pregnant? That's awful. That's, like, really bad. Um. My kingdom for a donkey? Do you want some gold? No? Okay, we'll have to wait. I can't afford to pay him the donkey yet. 55%. Are they going to... No, you need to move into... You Come and attack my armies, you fools. Okay, they're going to start reinforcing if they're in, they're in their own land, so that's not good. Hills bonus? Ah, don't like that. Get out. Okay, well, they've gained some men back. It's the last promise they have to see. They don't control the war goal, so no ticking war score either. They're going to have to attack into us eventually. So, we might as well just wait, like I said, for their troops to take as much damage as they can doing sieges. And we pray, and we hope, and we pray, and we hope. And that's all. My wife died in childbirth. That's the best thing I've ever heard. Daughter, you are um, something biggest. Marcella, biggest dickus. We're going to call you um, throw into sea. That, that's, a, that's a reminder for myself in the future. Offering me peace. <laughs> Do you want me to surrender? Oh, God, my money. Decline. Um, sorry? Does that affect our morale of armies minus 25%? Oh, no. That's a nice feature. I'm glad they put that in. Oh, we've got the money. M m wait, we don't have Flogie's tech mod. Sorry? <laughs> what? What's happening? Did I accidentally leave on Flogie's tech mod? That's not right. Oh, it's Jewish merchants. We're fine. Okay, well, let's let's tidy up this wall then. We need to move now if my money's running out. Who is this lady? Not interested. Get out. Oh, my God. We're going to lose again because he's just an unbelievable man. Oh, come on, center. Hold. No, we've lost again. How are we supposed to kill this man? His troops are so good. Oh, wow. We actually did it. Okay, ignore me. We're fine. Chase him down. Kill him dead. Ooh, I thought I was worried then for a second. His morale might be high, but his armies are still dying. And you know, morale doesn't just win a battle, unfortunately for him. Okay, um, let's go ahead and unsiege all of my many, many lands. That will give us time for our troops to reinforce as well. Nice. Okay. The kidnappers overpowered me and made sure I could not call for help by stopping a filthy rag into my mouth. Damn it. Nobody puts a filthy rag inside biggest dickers. Right, restore, uh, re reset is what I meant to say. Let's load the woman filter. I don't have a woman filter yet. Okay, hang on, married. No, join corp. That eh, doesn't really matter. The woman filter. Did I just load filter rather than save filter? <coughs> the woman filter. No, no, married. No, save filter. Number one. We're looking for genius ladies. Uh, there's an eight-year-old girl. She is Germanic. Latin solar. I don't know what that means, but it sounds incredible. Okay, there's no genius women. Annoying. Um, what about quick? Quick and attractive, maybe? No? Ugh. Um. Strong? 
Is there a strong lady? There's Glitter Hoop, Chancellor of Thuringia. Sold. May I marry Thuringia? I would like to marry Glitter Hoof, if you do not mind. No, he's saying no. Rude. She's scarred as well. Can't make... what, what's happened to her face? Oh my god, I think that's supposed to be lipstick, isn't it? Huh. That's the weirdest thing I've ever seen. Um, are there any genius or quick Catholic characters at all? Oh, sorry. N N Nicene. Um, quick? There's one, but she's 71 years of age. Oh my god, now there's no new wife. Um, good congenital traits then. Uh, great question. Thought by age. We'll just take a look around the age. We'll go my religious group, so at least we stand a chance of marrying them. Um, 23, 90. Okay, we've got left-handed. Not exactly what I'm looking for, I'll be honest with you. Um, left-handed. So this has got the additional congenital traits, because there is powerful voice and things like that. Um, just any heir of our dynasty wouldn't hurt at this point. So honestly, I'll take anybody who's got Midas touch. What about her? Arrange marriage between her and the Roman Emperor. Of course you'll say yes. Why am I taking her? Well, she's got left-handed, which is better than nothing. Martial intrigue. A little bit of bonus to that. She's minus touched. Fertility plus 15%. You know what? It's unfortunate there's no one better, but I'll take it anyway. We'll take the prestige if you don't mind, because uh, otherwise everyone's going to hate me. An emperor marrying a lowborn left-handed wench. Who could believe such a thing? But the world's gone mad. It stopped making sense, if you will. Excellent. My commander did something probably I should be proud of, but don't really care about at all ever. Thank you. Let's keep their troops uh, beaten down there. Go and counter siege our capital. Don't like that our capital got sieged. Not a fan of that in hindsight. But you know what? It's fine. You know what? This, worked, this war has worked out more or less exactly as I predicted. I am a scholar and a mystic and um, a psychic after all. So, you know, it's to be expected really. We might have to go and siege their capital as well because I don't think we'll get enough war score back just from counter sieging here. Because it's all been battle war score. Saying that, it's an offensive war. So, no, we won't. We are going to have to go and uh, attack them ourselves. Siege of Bar 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 Baridio? Okay, I think we might actually just about get away with um, counter sieging that and to worry about it. A peasant accused of murder is dragging is dragging before your court. His wife and children found butchered in a small hut they called home. Unbelievable. Toss him into the dungeon and leave him there. And we gain diligent. Welcome to your new premium Roman Emperor. Okay, he's still really, really bad. But that's a start. That's a step in the right direction. Thank you. I will sue for peace. Boom. The Austro-Gothic Dalmatian du jour war over ten years ended. Emperor Julius of the Western Emperor. Settle them outside the Western Roman Empire, or we settle them within the Roman Empire. Now, this was the event last time I made the mistake of doing. I settled them within, and they took most of my land. So, I don't like that. Settle them outside. Stay within their current borders. Leave them be. So, we can settle them, and they become our tributary. Or, I'm, you know what I'm going to say? I'm going to say, leave them be. And you know what I'm going to do now? I'm going to declare a friggin' war on them, and take everything they know and love. Because, what, sorry? Can I afford to lose a hundred... Piety. He's defending against heathens. I've never heard of anything so good in my life. Well, that explains why that all went so easy. Nice. Take him out. Okay, now we can do, I assume, to your claims. Yeah, we have to your claims at Imperial. What about Imperial Reconquest, though? Unification War of Italia? Oh, that's a hell of a cast of spell. Eh? You know what? We'll do that next time. Thank you for watching. I hope you appreciate this new series. I'm, I'm looking forward to doing something a bit more, you know, a bit more historical, a bit more Roman. It's something we've never done in CK2 for some reason. Shout out to all my top tier patrons, Sean Thornton, Danny Good, Zachary Harris, Josh Lynn, Dean Tesla, Lucas Holting, Haydog, Croesus, Gabriel Vandos, Michael Mullen, Logan Thorne, Conspired to you, James Ogilvy, Escape, and Jackson Whitman for your support. And of course, everybody else on Patreon who's ever backed as well. Brandon Matoniak, Felix Deal, Princess Ogilvy of the Dragon, Noble S, Quet Lachley, Zara Even, Facundo Vasquez, Paul Master, Imperator Augustus, appropriate name, Jack Allen, Chancellor Chief Palpatine, I am the Lizard King, Llewellyn Thomas, Euron DeVries, Euphrates, Don Connie 2 and 7, Jordan Camel, and Asaro. Thank you all for your support, without which the channel would not be able to continue because YouTube don't monetize me anymore. Hooray! That being said, go and check out RimWorld. If you like if you like CK2, you will like RimWorld. Trust me on that one. Just gonna have to say my word. They might not seem very similar on the surface, but when you dig below, they they have similarities aplenty. And I hope you enjoy the series. If you like it, obviously give me a like so I know what you guys like. If not, leave me a comment with some feedback about what you'd rather see. And I shall read those with my eyes.